united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Good morning. Welcome to United with Christ. I'm Pastor Lori Bolden from In His Presence Worship Ministry, and I'm here today with my husband, my pastor, and my friend, Pastor Thaddeus Bolton. Welcome. Hey, uh, hey I'm glad to be here. I'm excited to have my husband you know, uh, come and speak the word today. Listen, we have a word that this too shall pass. Mm. As a little girl, my grandmother would sing songs and say, trouble in my way, I had to cry sometime. But listen, in this time that we're going in, in this hour, there's a word for you that you shall live and not die. I'll be reading in your hearing, I'll be reading from uh, Jeremiah uh, 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord. They're thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek me and find me. When you search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I love the Lord, and I love God's word. He said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I predestined you. And do you not know that God knew that we would be going through a time like we're in now? But I believe God. I believe God. He's keeping them. He said, those that keep their minds stayed on me. He will keep us in perfect peace. He didn't tell us that tests and trials wouldn't come. But what he did say is they have come to make us strong. And Pastor, I think the people need to know in all the things that we're going through that this too shall pass. You're absolutely right. When, when you look at it, it, it brings to my memory the, the people that were enslaved and Moses basically had to come and free them. Yeah. All the prayers and supplication that they were doing unto God mm -hmm. saying, Lord, do you hear my prayers? And the bunch that they was in, they simply relied on God to get them out. Mm -hmm. So in a season such as this, people need to rely on knowing that if they have the fruits of the spirit, they're going to have to activate them. And one of the things that the fruit of the spirit says, long suffering, if we can endure because the word says in Psalms 35, weeping may endure for a night, but joy come in the morning. Yeah. So now the question is, when would that morning come? Mm -hmm. But if we activate the fruits of the spirit, we can endure. We can endure. And they say, well, how long? However long. We need to know that if we serve God, that God is going to prevail throughout whatever we say or do. If you have a made up mind to say, for God I live, for God I die. And with that made up mind, you can endure such what's taking place right now, the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Our adversary uses this for the sole purpose of separating, segregating, and isolating. And when he does that, we, what we used to be said a long time ago, our idle mind mm -hmm. is a yeah. devil workshop. Yeah. What takes place now, our adversary more than ever now wants to get you by yourself to make you feel that you are alone, yeah. to make you feel that you're helpless yeah. and that nothing will occur. But now what you have to realize are who you are. Yeah. And people, you know, when they're going through, that's the first thing they forget. Who am I? You're a child of the Most High. Yeah. And then you got to ask yourself, so what did I come here to do? Yeah. 
if he knew me before I was formed in my mother's womb, he already gave me my destination. He already told me, hey, this is what I'm sending you to earth to do. Yeah. So if you have that mindset to say, wow, I'm a child of the most high. He's allowed me now to come to earth to fulfill a mission that he sent me on. Now, will I fail? I'm always reminded of Jesus when he told his disciples to pray for him mm -hmm. in the garden. What we see during that time frame is the man of God and then the son of God. Yeah. The man of God loved his family. The man of God loved Joseph and Mary and all the rest of his siblings. And he had got accustomed to living here on earth. So when he asked to take the cup from him, he was simply acting like a man. Yeah. Yeah. But the deity in him, the God in him yeah. said, nevertheless. nevertheless. So if you keep a nevertheless attitude while going through, that will supersede whatever you're going through. So when you start crying throughout the night, you say, well, you know what? Joy is going to come in the morning. But Pastor, there's so many people, especially now, we're meeting them because in the midst of turmoil and tragedy, when all of these things hit, now people are running, what do, what do I do? Many people, the unsaved, people who, who've made mistakes, the backslider, they're running saying, Lord, what do I do in this time of fear? So now you have depression and oppression. You have people running to drugs and they're running to alcohol and they're doing, they're being promiscuous because they're trying to find a safe place in my mind, in my head. And so when Jeremiah said, when God said to Jeremiah, for I know the thoughts towards you, these people in the world said, what, what is the thought? What is God thinking for me? I'm a nobody. You know, look at me. I'm a heroin addict. Look at me. I'm a drug addict. How do we let these people know But there's a plan for you, that God is talking to you? Well, well first of all, when you're speaking to a nation, yeah. you have to realize that the people he uses is imperfect. You know, if you look throughout the Bible, everybody he used was imperfect. He used murderers. He used uh, tax collectors. There were swindlers. He used um, he used uh, promiscuous women. He used individuals for the sole purpose of saying, I can use anybody. Yeah. All you got to do is be willing and able. If you're willing and well, willing and obedient, if God said it, then that settles it. If you're willing, say, Lord, send me. God just wants to let you know he loves you in spite of, and regardless of what you've done in your past, he can wipe that clean. He'll throw it into the sea of forgetfulness and never allow it to return again. But at the same time, regardless of who you are, you can be used by God. And when you're running around trying to find, you say, you know, I'm reminded of what Jesus said to his disciples. I won't be with you always. Yeah. But now when I do leave, I'm going to send a comforter. Yeah. And that comforter is the Holy Spirit. And I'm going to tell you something about this Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will lead. It will guide it will be that small, still voice in the inside of you that tell you, don't do that. Yeah. Think twice about that. Uh, do you, have you made that a second thought? That Holy Spirit will then be your comforter. You know, there was a, a saying a long time ago, if you talk to yourself, you're crazy. But you know what? Then they changed it. If you answer yourself, you're crazy. But if the Holy Spirit now reside inside of you, yeah. talk to it. Yeah. Allow the Holy Spirit to talk to you. And then now you're saying, but what voice do I listen to? This, uh, You know what? First, it takes salvation. And I'm going to tell you the reason why I say this. Because small, still voices are being told to everybody. Yeah. Our adversary, like I say, separation, segregation, isolation. 
when he has you by himself, he will start to whisper to you. He will start telling you about the drug addiction. He will start telling you about being promiscuous. He will start telling you about all these things that now you say, is it worth it? Look at what's happening to the world. But you, what you got to realize more than ever now is greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. If you have that, first it takes salvation. Give your life to Christ. Once you give your mm -hmm. life to Christ, now what he'll do, he will send that comforter. Now that comforter will be with you wherever you go. He will be the small, still voice to lead and guide you. During that time when you're going through depression, he will be there to talk to you. When anxiety kick in, he'll be that calming spirit that has a, 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 a peace that surpasses all understanding. He will be your comforter. And when he said he ascended, he said, well, hey, I can't be here always. I'm going back to my father. Mm -hmm. And so now since I'm leaving, I'm going to send a spirit so you could dwell with, just like he sent to me when he asked his cousin to baptize him. He said, hey, baptize me. You know, I could only imagine what John looked at when yeah. he said, yeah. you, the Christ? The Christ, yeah. you." you <laughs> I'm not even worthy of holding your sandals. And you telling me, he said, but it's written. So when he came, the Holy Spirit came down in the form of a dove. Look at what all Jesus was able to do when he was equipped with the Holy Spirit. Look what all you will be able to do once you're equipped with the Holy Spirit to endure. This too will pass. This too will pass. And when you were talking about that, I was thinking about when uh, Jesus was on the boat. Oh, you look know, at here. here we are in this pandemic, and uh, many people are at home saying, but look at what we're going through right now. Where's Jesus at? What, look, look at all the things that's happening mm. in the world, the chaos, the dissension, all of this, uh, this wreaking havoc in people's homes in this nation. Where's Jesus? And so it reminded me of the disciples when they say, carest thou not that we perish? Jesus sleep. He sleep. He mm. sleep because he already knew he had the authority to speak to the storm. And do you not know we still have that authority today? When you talked about the Holy Spirit residing mm. in us, we have that authority that you can take authority. Listen, COVID can't kill you. You can speak it and rebuke it. I speak it, I declare it, I decree it over my home, my family. I laugh with my daughter and my husband all the time. No, you can't die. You can't die. You have to live. It is time that we start declaring the word. When Pastor was speaking earlier, he talked about the fears and the things that the enemy comes in this world to put in our mind. And so we have all these things. And listen, not minimizing, these things are real. But the blood of Jesus the blood of Jesus is so much powerful, and I promise you, but you have to know him. You have to get in a place with Jesus. You have to know him as your savior, and I promise you, start speaking what God says. If the doctor says you have this, you begin to speak it and say, not so, because the word of God said, by his stripes I am healed. I speak to my respiratory system. I speak to the heart. I speak to the lungs. I speak to the arteries. You have the power. And so for you that's sitting at home thinking, but you don't know what I'm going through. We're going to come in your house today and we're going to come and take authority of everything that's in your house. The weight that you've been going through, mm. we brush it off in the spirit realm. And I believe God. And so, Pastor, when you were talking about that, it's so important because even when you're telling the people about God has plans for them, you said, but wait, you need to know him. Exactly. It's so important because we always want the things of God, but we don't want the relationship with him. You have to come in covenant with the Holy Spirit. You have to have relationship with God. Mm -hmm. You have to be able to sup with him. When pastor began to say, begin to talk to the Holy Spirit. Oh, there's a small, still voice that mm -hmm. is clear with no confusion. You will know that God speaks. Definitely. You know, um, and, and this is the biggest problem 
People say, I hear voices all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay. But if the voice is not glorifying or edifying God, then that voice is not of God. The biggest problem, a lot of people say, well, you know, do I have to be Holy Ghost filled to to go to heaven? Do I have to be Holy Ghost filled to, to do certain things? And, you know, I love what they said on Facebook. Hey, do I have to be Holy Ghost filled to go to heaven? And the remarks was, you have to be Holy Ghost filled to go to Kmart or Walmart. Walmart. Simply because what you need is a comfort. You need somebody inside of you to lead and guide you. But if you don't know him, now the voices can be voices that's not of God. If you know him, you will know his voice. If you know him, then you you meditate on his word, get into a relationship, have a covenant with him. And I, I say this, and I, I don't want to be harsh when I say what I'm going to say. Religion may have you go to hell. Relationship is what's needed. Because, see, religion will give you doctrine, procedures, and have a, a program. And that program might even be elimination of the Holy Spirit even entering into the program. So now if you come into a covenant with God, God now will speak to you at any time. You remember when he died on the cross, he split the veil. And when he split the veil, he allowed now all access to God. Think about that. Before you had to have a priest to go in and then atone for your sins after you gave him a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. But now because Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice, mm-hmm. the veil was torn and now you have access to him. Yeah. If you have a p- pure and sincere heart and you give your life to God, God will then see that. And I'm going to tell you something. He's not too busy to know about you. Yeah. He's not too busy to see about you. And because he knows every strand of hair on your body, look at this. What we have to look at now, our God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The God of yesterday, now, I'm going to tell you, they said he was harsh. Mm -hmm. Because in the Old Testament, you've seen God do some things, you're like, oh my God. Just fell dead. Yeah, you lied <laughs> dead. Yeah. But now, an intercessor, look what he did in yeah. Matthew this, after 400 years of the Old Testament. Yeah. He sent his son to yeah. intercede on our behalf. Yeah. So when we don't get it right, guess who's advocating on our behalf to God? Yeah. He's saying, you know what, Lord, give, give him another chance. You know, he hasn't got it right. Yeah. And the angels that are signed, I tell people this, and I said this in church, and people looked at me real strange when I said it. The angel that was assigned to me in my BC days, I call them before Christ days, I know he had to be running back and forth to God, scratching his head saying, Lord, yeah. are you sure? <laughs> And he said, well, you know, I know you all knowing and all this, but do you you think you could have made a mistake on this one? (laughs) Simply because what that angel was seeing was all the stuff that just transpired before my transition. Yeah. And when the transition take place, you're a new creature in Christ. Those old things are passed away. So now the angel is sitting back saying, Lord, so you had a master plan. Master plan. Because, see, what I seen before, I would have shook my head and shook it off and say, no, 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 not this one, Lord. I, hey, I know you don't make no mistakes, but this one right here, we can kick to the curb. But we have a God that loves us in spite of ourselves. We have a God that will endure. And even while we're going through, even while we're going through, he's there to comfort us. You know, um, all we have to do is pray to him, yeah. you know, and just uh, seek his face. Yeah, seek his 
people say, it's amazing when we understand that he died for our sins. Exactly. He knew you were going to make some mistakes. We all were going to make mistakes. He said, I have you covered. That's the, the, when the Bible talks about the grace of God. But let me tell you now, we're in an hour <sighs> of storms and uh, uh, tests and trials. But this scripture, and I'm sure you've heard it all over the world, but the Bible saying all you're getting, get, get an, an understanding. understanding. And so I want to read in your hearing uh, 2 Chronicles 7 and 14. And it's so important. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from your wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears will be attentive to prayer made in this place for now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart will be there perpetually if my people who is he talking to he's talking to the body of Christ he's talking to all of us who have gave our life to Christ pastors leaders teachers evangelists deacons doorkeepers singers whoever you want to be but he's talking to you it is time that we turn from our wicked ways that means to repent Lord forgive me if it's any unforgiveness, if it's, if I'm hated, if I hate my friends, if it's murder on your mind, whatever it is, if it's racism, Lord, take this from me. Take this from me. Lord, I want to be right in your presence. I want to be where God is. And let me tell you, if you turn, he said, then I'll heal your land. Mm. What we're going through right now, it's a shaking. It's a shaking. God is right there. Jesus is sitting on the boat. He's sitting on the boat. He's watching us. He said, but if my people. So listen, get your life right. If it's friends, if it's family, if it's your brother, if it's your coworkers, get your life right. He said, love them that hate you. Mm. He said, love them that despitefully use you. Love them. Listen, in all of this thing that you're going through in the political career, trust God. He is the king of all kings and he's the Lord of all lords. We have to trust and depend on God. But let me pray with you at home. Father, I ask God that you go into the homes of your people, God. Lift your hands where you're at. It's a part of surrendering. But Father, go, God, where they're weary, God, and they're hopeless, God. Father, that you are the hope of glory. God, wrap your loving arms around them, God. Give them peace, God, that surpasses all, all understanding. I break the spirit of fear. I come against the spirit of death. In the name of Jesus, the joy of the Lord is your strength. God, save their children. Protect them, God. Protect them in the jailhouses, God. I rebuke the spirit of COVID. Father, I ask that you come to El Paso, Texas, in the name of Jesus, God. Go into the hospital rooms. Go into the ICUs, God. Resurrect, God. God, turn it around, God. You said it will work in your favor, God. I speak to the lungs. I speak to the respiratory system. I rebuke heart failure. I come against diabetes. I rebuke high blood pressure in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you, God. I thank you that this today, God, will be a great day, God, of testimony, God, of healing, God. I speak to the children, God. I speak to every person that is worried and dismayed. Give them peace, God, mm. that surpasses all understanding. In Jesus' name. Amen. It's the peace of God that keeps us, Pastor. Oh, yes. He keeps us. You know, um, I'm, I'm totally reminded in, in my circular years, we used to have an acronym for fear. Yes. We used to have what? False evidence appearing mm. real. And we used to say, hey, if you if you keep that in your mind, it's false evidence. And we say, no, this is real. Mm -hmm. What we have to realize now is we have to rely on the word of God. Okay. And if the word of God says no weapon formed mm -hmm. against me 
-hmm. shall prosper. Yeah. Now you have to really investigate that because now you got to say to yourself, there is going to be a weapon formed. I'm, I'm going to have to go through trials and tribulations. But greater is he that's in yeah. me than he that's in the world. Yeah. So as I go through this path, he'll be with me. All the time. And you know, if, if, if God said this, if you love me, keep my commandments. That's it. So now you have to say to yourself, I'm equipped with the most powerful weapon there is. Yeah. The most powerful weapon there is. And regardless of what society throws at me, I'm equipped. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. And that's what's so important. You have to know that you're more than a conqueror. Listen, I invite you to worship with us at In His Presence International Worship Ministries. We're at 8935 Gateway South Boulevard. We have our uh, Sunday service live on Facebook at 9.30 a.m. You get to hear my pastor, Hubby. Mm. You know, we have amazing worship team. We have amazing intercessors that's willing to pray with you until we see breakthrough. Listen, we have a thing in our church that says, speak the word only. only. You only say what God says. If God didn't say it, we not claiming it. And so I believe that in your house, that God will break the spirit of lack and not enough. Mm. I'm talking about the miracle signs and wonders will come and flood your house, begin to speak over your family, begin to speak over this nation, and tell the people this too shall pass. Oh, yes. You're going to look back and think, God, what did I go through in 2020? But we're going to see that Jesus is the answer for the world today. Oh, yes, he is.